Welcome to the video on Midpoint. The purpose of this video is to extend your knowledge of Midpoint a little bit beyond the definition so that you can apply some algebra to some problems involving Midpoint and then we'll move Midpoint onto the coordinate plane and talk about what happens um, when we graph some segments and try to find their midpoints. So let's review first a little bit about what Midpoint is. If I take a look at the word itself, midpoint, and I think about it in two separate pieces, that prefix mid tells me the middle. So I'm looking for the middle point. Well, the middle point of what? So I'm going to take you or ask you to take a minute and think to yourself, could an angle have a midpoint? How about a line? Do you think it would be possible for a ray? to have an endpoint or a midpoint? Well, if we think about these geometric shapes, this is what an angle looks like. And again, I think about the word midpoint. It's one point. Well, where could I possibly put a point on that angle so that it would be the middle point in my angle? I really can't do that, and therefore angles don't have midpoints. With respect to a line, a line extends indefinitely in two directions. And so again, if I think about the concept of trying to place or find a middle point, it really isn't possible to do so. And likewise, if I think about a ray, a ray extends indefinitely in one direction. So again, I ask myself the question, where would I put on a ray the middle point? And I really can't seem to find a spot. So it's important to recognize and understand that when we talk about midpoint, we're really talking about the middle point on a line segment, or the middle of a line segment. Angles don't have midpoints. Rays don't have midpoints. Lines don't have midpoints. Only line segments. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into an example. Number one says that point F is the midpoint of line segment EG. If the distance between points E and G is 5x plus 4, and the distance between points E and F equals 2x plus 37, find X and the length of line segment FG. All right, so this is a nice little problem. However, they don't give me a picture to go along with it. So anytime in geometry that I don't have a picture, the very first thing that I'm going to do is use the information that's provided in the problem to sketch a diagram. That way I'll have a nice visual of exactly what's going on in the problem, and it'll help me understand the problem better. So point F is the midpoint of line segment EG. I'm going to go ahead and start out by drawing line segment EG. Line segment EG is going to have endpoint E and endpoint G. F is the midpoint. So that means F goes right in the middle of line segment EG. And if F is the midpoint, I know that it's going to break my line segment into two equal parts, or two equal pieces. The two equal pieces are going to be line segment EF and line segment FG. I'm going to mark them congruent in my diagram, and you should on your paper as well. So now that I've got my diagram going on, I'm going to go ahead and mark everything that I've got or am given in the problem. This says first that the distance between points E and G is 5x plus 4. So in other words, the length of the whole big line segment is 5x plus 4. The distance between points E and F is 2x plus 37. Now it wants me to find X and the length of line segment FG. Well, EF is that little piece. E to G represents the whole thing. So obviously the two of them can't be equal to each other. The distance between E and G is much larger than the distance between points E and F. So what you need to do is really ask yourself the question, is what is the difference? difference between this little blue line segment, EF, and the length of the whole thing. Well, the distance from E to G, the length of the whole thing, is going to be worth 
two of the distances between E and F. So when I go to write an equation, I need to write an equation that says the distance between points E and G is double or twice as much as the distance between points E and F. Well, the distance between points E and G is 5x plus 4. The distance between points E and F, oh, that's kind of cool. There's a little ghost inside my computer here again, is 2x plus 37, but I want two of those. So two times the 2x plus 37. And now that I've got my equation set up, I'm all set to go ahead and solve. So I'm going to distribute on the right-hand side first of all. And at this point, I've got x's on both sides. I don't like x's on both sides, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x's from both sides. And I find that x is equal to 70. So the first part of the problem, they wanted me to find x. I'm done. However, they were a little sneaky here, and they also asked me to find the distance or the length of line segment FG. And if I go back over here to the nice picture that I drew, I don't know where I haven't even represented the length of line segment FG in terms of x. However, I know that the distance between points F and G is exactly the same as the distance between points E and F. So in order to find the distance between points F and G, I'm simply going to go plug in 70 in place of the X and then evaluate. So the length of line segment FG is 177. All right, so there's your first algebraic problem involving midpoint. Let's go take a look at another one. This one says M is the midpoint of line segment AB. If the distance between points A and M is a half Y minus 3, and the distance between points B and M is 8 minus a half Y, they want us to find both Y and the length of line segment AB. So just like the first problem, anytime I'm given a problem and I'm not given a picture, the first thing I'm going to do is start by drawing a diagram. Line segment AB has endpoint A and endpoint B. It has midpoint M. And I know that if M is the midpoint, the midpoint is going to split my line segment into two equal parts. So I know that the distance from A to M is the same as the distance from M to B. Now I'm going to go label my givens in the diagram. Distance from A to M is a half Y minus 3. Distance from B to M, and again, I'm not quite sure how I managed to do that. Let me go erase and put that back where it belongs. Distance from B to M is 8 minus a half Y. Find Y in the length of MB. This question, I think, is even a little bit more straightforward than the first one was. This distance is equal to this distance. So we want to write an equation that indicates or sets the distance from A to M equal to the distance from M to B. So I'm going to go ahead and write a half Y minus 3 is equal to 8 minus a half Y. Now there are a lot of different what things that you can do in order to solve this equation. I'm going to go ahead because I don't like seeing the fraction in there and multiply each and every term in the equation times 2. It is not the only way to solve the equation. It's simply one possible approach. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add y to both sides. So if I add y to the left, I get 2y minus 6. If I add y to the right, I get plain old 16. I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So 2y's are equal to 22, which then makes the value of y equal to 11. If y is equal to 11, 
Now I can go ahead and I can find the distance between points A and M and the distance between points M and B. So distance between points A and M is a half y minus 3. Or in other words, a half of my 11 subtract 3, which is 2 and a half. So this piece is 2 and a half units long. This piece is 2 and a half units long. Together, then the length of the whole line segment has to be 5 units long. All right, so let's now take our discussion onto the coordinate plane. And the next thing that it asks is how can we find a midpoint in the coordinate plane? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go jump right down to letter A, where it says find the coordinates of the midpoint for a segment with the given endpoints. And I'm going to go plot those points and take a look at those line segments. So there's the first one. And there's B. So I'm going to guess that the midpoint is probably going to be somewhere around right there. But how can I really, really, really be sure? And that's where the midpoint formula comes in. We have, like we have formulas for slope and formulas for lines. We also have a formula that we can use to find the coordinates of a midpoint in the coordinate plane. And this is kind of, I think, a common sense kind of formula. If I think about the midpoint as being the middle or the average, to find the midpoint, what I'm really going to do is I'm going to average the x-coordinates, and that will become the x-coordinate of my midpoint. And I'm going to average the y-coordinates, which will become the y-coordinate of my midpoint. So anytime I use a formula in geometry, the first thing I'm going to do is write it down. So there's my formula. I also need to see formula substitutions. Anytime you substitute into a formula, I must see which numbers you substituted in. So the two x values in this case are 4 and negative 2. To average a number means to add them together and divide by 2. So 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. And then to average the y coordinates, 2 plus 6 divided by 2. And whatever I get when I perform those calculations will become the coordinates of my new midpoint. So just as I suspected, the coordinates of the midpoint now are 1, 4. And this is going to be especially handy as we move on to the next one, because letter B isn't quite so clear cut when we look at the picture as letter A was. So let's see, I just erased my picture so that I can go ahead and start from scratch. Letter B says the coordinates of x, or point x, are negative 3, negative 7. So there's point x. The coordinates of y are 5, negative 4. So if I were trying to find a midpoint now, it's maybe not so clear-cut as it was when I was trying to find a midpoint for the first example. Good thing I've got my midpoint formula. So in order to find the midpoint, I'm going to average the x values together, then I'm going to average the y values together. So average two things means add them and divide by 2. So negative 3 plus 5 divided by 2. For the y values, negative 7 plus negative 4 divided by 2. So the x-coordinate of my midpoint is therefore going to be 1. The y value of my coordinate, or the y coordinate, or the y part of my coordinate, is either going to be negative 11 halves, negative 5 and a half, negative 5.5, however you want to express that y coordinate. So this one, again, not so clear cut. It's really a good thing that we had that midpoint formula to use. All right, let's go ahead and try the last one now. Wow, I don't even know how I would plot that uh, point L. So again, it's a good thing we have our midpoint formula. 
I'm going to average the x-coordinates and average the y-coordinates. So the x-coordinates don't give us too much trouble. We can average 1 and negative 5 pretty easily. The y-coordinates aren't going to give us too much trouble either as long as we have a calculator. Alright, so like I said, the x-coordinate doesn't give us too much trouble. The y-coordinate, I'm simply going to grab my calculator, type in negative 9.2 plus the negative 4.7. Once I get that sum, I'll divide by 2, and that comes out to be negative 6.95. All right, so that's how you can find a midpoint. Let's go ahead and flip up to the top of the next page. This says, for each example below, a segment with a given endpoint has midpoint M. Find the coordinates of the other endpoint. So just like I did... Um, with the others that didn't have a picture, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sketch a picture. So A, I'm going to call the other endpoint B just because for lack of something else to call it, the midpoint is M. So A has coordinates 6, 2. M, the midpoint, has coordinates 2, 0. B, the other endpoint, is what we're trying to find coordinates for. This, I don't think, is too terribly tricky as long as we remember that we want this number right here to be the average of this x value and this x value. In other words, the distance from the midpoint m to this x coordinate must be the same as the change is the dis or the distance from m to the other coordinate. So I'm going to look at this and say, well, in moving from 6 down to 2, we experience a change by subtracting 4. In order to keep that guy in the middle, we want to go ahead and subtract 4 more, and we end up at negative 2. And now if I average 6 and negative 2 together, 6 plus negative 2 is 4, divided by 2 gives me 2. If I think about the y's in the same sense, in moving from 2 to 0, we experience a change of so subtract 2. So in going from the midpoint to the other line segment, or the other endpoint, we want our change to be exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2 again. And again, I can check this mentally by just going ahead and saying 2 plus a negative 2 does give me the 0. So the coordinates of my other endpoint here, negative 2, negative 2. All right, let's go try another one. Letter B says the coordinates of point X are negative 4, 3, and the midpoint is negative 1, negative 1. So I'm going to call this endpoint X. Here's my midpoint, negative 1, negative 1, and I'm trying to find the coordinates of the other endpoint, which I'm going to call Y. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the change in the x values. The change was a plus 3. In order to keep this guy in the middle and keep him on an even keel, I need this change here to be a plus 3 as well. So negative 1 plus 3 leaves me at 2. And for the y values, the change was a minus 4. Again, keeping in mind that I need to keep the midpoint in the middle, I'm going to need to do another minus 4 on the other side to keep m in the middle. So now the coordinates of my other endpoint there are 2, negative 5. And I'm going to go think about this last one exactly the same. So I've got one endpoint at P. I've got a midpoint at M. The coordinates of P are 7, 3. The coordinates of point M are 2, 1. I'm trying to find the coordinates of this other endpoint. So again, I'm just going to look at the change. In moving from 7 down to 2, there was a change of minus 5. In order to keep m in the middle and keep that balance, we have to have another change of a minus 5. So we end up at negative 3. 
On the y side, we did a 3 down to a 1 for a change of minus 2. We've got to keep m in the middle and keep that balance. A 1 subtract 2 leaves us at negative 1. So the coordinates of our other endpoint are negative 3, negative 1. If you have questions about midpoint, now would be a great time to jot them down in the margin, or you can email me with any questions. And when you come back to class, of course, you can ask any questions, and we'll be doing some practice with this whole idea of midpoint.